Okay, um, so I have created this small video uh, to help you um, um, understand some uh, basic in Automation Studio. In this video, as per your request, I'm going to design a hydraulic circuit uh, that will be able to control a hydraulic motor um, in both forward and reverse directions, so clockwise and counterclockwise direction, with some conditions that we have to use um, a 4 by 3 DCV which will allow the pump uh, to keep running at low pressure while the hydraulic motor is stopped. So um, we're going to have to use tandem center 4 by 3 DCV um, to fulfill this condition. The other condition being um, able to control the speed of the motor only for the clockwise uh, direction and not during the other way uh, or the counterclockwise motion so this is asking for uh, the use of a unidirectional flow control valve um, which will also need to be um, uh, utilized in this circuit so let's start uh, i have already um, uh, the hpu for this um, uh, circuit i will only build up the rest of the components so we don't have to um, uh, spend time on the basics too much so uh, first off is to uh, uh, have all the um, components ready. We are going to control a hydraulic motor. For, so that's number one. For the hydraulic motor, I'm going to go to hydraulic and then um, actuators. Under the actuator, I got bi-directional motor. Uh, I can take that. Uh, this is also bi-directional uh, with uh, variable displacement options. Uh, I think I can pick that up and this should this should do and then I'm going to um, uh, edit the position so it can lie like this okay so the motor is on the stage now next thing we need to control the motor we need a 4 by 3 DCV so I'm going to go back to hydraulics look for a 4 by 3 DCV this is a 4 by 3 DCV I'm going to pick that and leave it on top of these two open ports. They immediately connect. But this one is not a tandem center. Um, so I'm going to quickly show you how you can edit an existing DCV into any configuration you want. Uh, so I'll double click this DCV and that will take us to the edit uh, window. In the edit, sorry, in the edit window, I'll leave it here. Uh, I'm going to have to select a different tab from data. So let's say I'll select technical specs. It shows me the preview of this DCV as you can see on the screen. And I want to modify the central block. So I select that. You can control anything here. You can change anything uh, on this DCV by clicking that. I'll select the single, uh, sorry, the central block, double click and it will pop up this window for us and I have to pick the tandem center. Uh, the tandem configuration is down there somewhere so I will go scroll down a little bit and here this is the tandem where the P and T are internally connected so I'll select that hit apply and it changes that to the tandem center now I have to apply, hit apply one more time and then you will see it will update to this configuration. 3, 2, 1, here we go. And now it's changed. So we have now um, manual lever operated 4x3 DCV with a tandem center. This will allow the pump to still run but at low pressure when we uh, choose this central block and stop the motor from spinning. Okay. Right, now uh, the motor needs some speed control as, 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 as I mentioned in the beginning of this video that we need a unidirectional flow control valve that will only affect the motor speed in a clockwise direction and it will leave the motor unaffected in the counterclockwise direction. So let's look for the unidirectional flow control. For that, you need to go to flow valves here and uh, we have to pick the one with bypass, so non-return valve select that and under that the first component is what we actually need 
I'm going to drag it on the screen and this is how it looks like. Um, I'm just going to flip it about uh, the horizontal axis so it looks better. So this is what I want to do and it changes to this. And now I'll put it roughly here, complete the connections. Um, also on this side and then I'll come back to the DCVs B port. Now you can select the port names in the view tab. It will show all the names of the ports A, B, P and T. So now the way we connected this FCV to the motor it will affect the flow going this way from the left side of the of the motor and as a result of the check valve positioning orientation all the flow going up through this branch will be bound to go through the FCV and so this will give us control over how much flow can go into the pump sorry the motor but it will not affect this motion so the fluid when it's coming from the rod side and returning this time the fluid has a better way to take the bypass instead of this uh, flow control valve and that's why the flow coming from the right to the left won't be affected so we cannot speed control the clockwise motion counterclockwise motion so now that we have set up everything in order to be able to uh, measure the pressure uh, up and downstream of the motor we need two gauges so I'll go to hydraulic tab pick the pressure gauge for left another one for the right they will read the pressure in bar and uh, now we are mostly ready and uh, next thing we want to do is go to simulation tab hit normal simulation and see that um, okay the motor is spinning this is the position for clockwise but this is going counterclockwise so it looks like we have to stop it and change the motor's direction to do that we need to first disconnect the motor and in order to disconnect it I just have to press the shift key of the keyboard and then drag it with my mouse leave it here and release the shift key that way I can tear apart the connections and now I want to flip it about a vertical axis so leave it selected go to edit flip it about a vertical axis like that and now it's flipped you see the B is here A is there now we move it back this time without pressing the shift key because we want to make the connection not tear them apart and voila now hopefully when we select this block it will turn clockwise and vice versa so this block uh, looks like it's still moving counterclockwise I don't know why uh, and then this okay so let's undo a few steps and see what actually happens okay this is uh, not what I was expecting but anyway okay regardless of the direction let's see if we can control the motion of this spinning only when the fluid is going to the left side to the right and not in the other direction okay so for for being able to control the speed we need to first read the need to be able to read the speed so in order to do that you have to go to simulation and then pick this uh, uh, icon hit that your cursor will change and this will tell us uh, various things about the motor that is spinning so I'll click the motor once with this cursor it will turn purple and then I'll hit it second time left click on the mouse um, and then don't leave the mouse button drag it and put it where you want to read the values and now release the mouse button now it asks you what do you want to want to read so I want to read radial speed in RPM precision will be full numbers only no fraction and then hit OK and now it's reading the RPM uh, 297 RPM I can right click once more to bring my mouse cursor back to the original and now you can see 
flow is from right to left and it is moving clockwise and the speed is almost 300 rpm now hit click somewhere on this component it will tell you what is going on the internal diameter is one millimeter and the cracking pressure is one bar the cracking pressure applicable for this uh, check valve and the internal diameter is applicable for this flow control valve this is what we have set but the ongoing flow which is not this is the returning flow the ongoing flow is only affected by this by this fcv setup it should not be affecting the returning flow so when i'm going this way you see the rpm is 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 reduced drastically uh, now it's from 300 all the way suddenly to uh, uh, below 50 rpm because now the flow is going through this fcv to the left side of the motor and coming out this way but you also see notice that uh, the, the pressure is very high on this line, so the flow is not happening. The lines are all solid color. Flow is happening here, when you, where you see the broken li uh, lines. So, meaning the path, this path for the fluid is very difficult to flow through. As a result, fluid is uh, returning to the tank via the pressure relief valve. So, we can, we can increase the diameter so that fluid is encouraged mostly to travel through here. So, I'm going to make it 2 millimeter now you can see broken line in the main circuit this circuit now has less resistance than the pressure relief up so fluid is preferring this passage at a speed of almost 180 to 80 rpm if i switch the direction of the spinning now it the speeds up and it goes to 300 rpm uh, because it's now the fluid is now traveling this way and coming back through the check valve. You see the gap here is increased suddenly. When I select this position, you will see this gap will close like so. Now, because this is now not allowing any fluid to go across the check valve, so all the fluid is pushed through the FCV. So whatever you change here will affect the speed, but this does not affect the other motion, the clockwise motion, for example, this motion. Okay, so this is how you can uh, build the circuit and, and uh, implement all those things. One way to ensure that the speed you're getting from the motor is good is to click and check what is the internal volume. This is 100 cubic centimeter per revolution. Check the same thing for your pump. This is 50 cubic centimeter per revolution. The pump is not producing as much flow is needed by the by the motor motor is larger than the pump so to make things even you click the motor and reduce its size to 50 so now it is same size as the pump internal volume which will help to gain more speed you can see immediately we have now 600 rpm in the clockwise direction and when i select the counterclockwise it is 350 rpm because now it's restricted I can select it to be 1.5 to restrict it more. You see now down to 200 RPM, but this change should not affect the other way. Like here is still 600 or 581. It, this remains unchanged because uh, this is a fixed opening via the check valve bypass. It doesn't affect the speed as much. Hopefully this was easy to understand. Also pay attention when we stop the motor from running Right now it's almost stopped. The pump is still running, but at, at a very low pressure. And that's what uh, uh, I mentioned in the beginning. We choose a DCV that will allow the pump to relax or run at low pressure. And when the pump motor is not using the flow. So now the motor is isolated from the pump and the pump is still running, but not at high pressure. It is continuously running at blue color. That means at atmospheric pressure, which is great. Okay, so that's all. Thank you very much. Hopefully you can reproduce the circuit on your own and main, make sure that you um, use those uh, boundary conditions, the, the numbers, the parameters that I have used, 50 cubic centimeter per revolution. The motor I have used 600 RPM for the pressure. Um, I use 50 bar and uh, for this one, cracking pressure is one bar, uh, which is atmospheric and the flow control valve set to 1.5 millimeters. This one, internal volume 50 and two gauges to read the pressures. That's all, thank you very much.